Well, good morning. What a glorious morning it is. It is currently five o'clock in the morning. I've been up since about quarter to four. Um, and as you can tell, I'm in a camper van. Unfortunately, not owned by myself, <laughs> but um, very generously given to me for the weekend by my good mate Ewan and his wife Laura, who are both currently running the Mont Blanc Ultra Marathon in France. I um, left work yesterday about half past five and driven three hours north to the side of Loch Morrow, which is not far from my leg, and my plan is to catch the ferry across to the Isle of Skye to do some landscape photography, which I'm absolutely buzzing about, I cannot wait. I've been really looking forward to this trip, something a bit different, obviously with the camper van. A very luxurious camp, should I say. Um, yeah, so looking forward to a bit of comfort. Said I've been wrapped up in my bivvy bag. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, anyway, I'm going to go and catch this ferry. The ferry leaves the port at 7.40, I need to be down there for 7. So I'm going to get this coffee and get on the road. See you in a bit. side of the road, it's half eight in the morning, the sun is splitting in the sky, there's not even a cloud at all anywhere, it is absolutely glorious, um, I've cooked up a couple of boiled eggs, going to get some breakfast, another coffee, and then get back on the road, but <laughs> check this place out. Well, I think I'm on the right path, not 100%, but I don't see any other paths. <laughs> also, all this heat, this fern's just overgrown. It's like Jurassic Park. <laughs> I just hope there's not any ticks in amongst it all. My legs brushing up against it here. I'm going, climbing right up there. <laughs> Excellent. The word tit comes to mind. <laughs> oh well, I've got an hour and a half before the tide's fully out and it's safe to go around and it's safe to cross, so may as well get a move on. Well, I've just came from my way down. Nice to see up to here. 
Det er kjært god energi fra der. I'm gonna go up and get that head torch come out and dive straight in that she. <coughs> what a day, absolutely stunning. Let's go. Me just outside Spar Cave. I'm just coming right round the coast, waist deep in water at bits. <laughs> nice and cool. Here's the entrance to the cave there. Gonna go in and take a look. Get my head torch this time. <laughs> Quite an eerie place. I don't want to get stuck here. There's a dead end up there. I don't think this is a right cave. <laughs> That's me now at the entrance, I think, to Spark Cave. There's in the, the small cave next door, but I think this is the right one now. Some stuff been washed up. I need to put this camera away for a bit. I need to start climbing. I'll put this away and get it back out and through the worst of this. Eventually found it. Oh, I've been all over. Trying to find this. I don't get much time. Wow. I'm just going to put this camera away to climb up this. It's going right up. Whoa. In Spar Cave. Woo! <laughs> Pretty eerie when you're in here yourself, but there's my setup. I've got the flash set at half power, which is quite strong because it is pitch black. I put this off. And that's what we can see just the lights for the camera, nothing else at all. So I've got a couple of pictures with the flash. And it's lit the cave up nicely. Everything's all white in here, so it's reflective. It's bouncing the light everywhere and it looks quite good. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here before this tide comes in. I'm stuck here for the next 12 hours. Bye bye. Once we got back from Spar Cave, um, I ended up driving back through Elgol trying to find an area that I thought could park overnight, but there's quite a lot of signs up telling you no overnight parking, no caravans, no campers, so I've decided to head back back towards the where I got the ferry this morning. It's only five or six miles on the journey back, but I spotted this area earlier on. There's a few people camping, and I noticed a few campers about. Um, so I've picked a great spot. 
hope I can get a nice picture of the work here. I'm hoping to get a picture with the camper van in the foreground. And then the tide will be back in later on, covering all the mid ground and hills in the background here. Hopefully we can make this work, it'll be a great shot. Um, I'm going to go out, walk about, try and set up a composition, find a composition I like. Might need to manoeuvre the van about a bit um, to make it work. And then we need to wait the tide coming in and sunset. I might crack up my cider actually and enjoy the rest of the sun, the rest of the summer should I say, <laughs> while it lasts. <laughs> It's about quarter past eight. Still got a couple hours till sunset. So I'm going to get my dinner just before the midges decide to make an appearance. Nothing worse cooking and eating when the midges are eating you. Yeah, my plan slightly changed for dinner. I originally planned to have a ribeye steak, which I've got in the van, but it's turned. It's been in a cool box all day, but it's still turned um, just with the heat, the sun beating through the window. It's been pretty warm all day today. Um, but luckily, I brought a couple of these Asda ready cooked burgers, you just need to heat these up, which I'm sure will taste fine off the barbecue. And I've got some of the finest red wine to wash it down. But I mean, can I beat this? Sheer solitude. Cheers to Lauren Ewan for allowing me to come up here and experience this. Very generous of the two of them to let me use her camper for the weekend. Cheers to my wife Laura for allowing me to come up as well. <laughs> She's back at home watching her two year old son. She's a very understanding person. By that I mean she understands that I need to run away to the hills every now and again with all my toys, <laughs> cameras and drones and whatever else. She's also got a hendo coming up to Barcelona next weekend, so it balances itself out, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get this burger on. Cheers. Well, I've got my shots set up here. The camper in the foreground. The tide's in, and then the hills in the background there. There's some nice clouds coming in here, I'm hoping these are just going to come right in. Some nice high altitude clouds here, so they should light up. <coughs> when the sun sets, hopefully they light up. I can't see over behind these hills, obviously, to see how much clouds on the horizon, but my fingers crossed that these just ignite. That would be absolutely class. <coughs> I'm just waiting for that first. I'll make sure I get the, the clouds captured. I've got the detail of the car all captured now. And then, what I'll do when it gets a slightly a bit darker, maybe they're running about the blue hour, I'll shut all the windows, put the lights on and capture that and blend them all together and post to create the one image. So we'll see how it turns out. Fingers crossed we get some colour in the sky, that's what we're hoping for. Well, good morning. It's about 7 a.m. Um, I set my alarm about quarter to four. I had a peek out the window, and yeah, again, there wasn't any cloud in the sky, so there wasn't much of a sunrise. Um, so I stayed in bed. Woke up about half past six. Got up, got a few shots of some nice light clipping the, the hills in the background there. Just got to get some breakfast and get ready to head and catch this ferry, which is at half past ten. Three hour drive back from 
a week. So yeah, looking forward to it. Lovely drive, and it's a lovely morning. Anyway, breakfast time.